I'm Lucien. It's not always easy to pronounce it, but you can manage. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as LBlagonic, so if you have any questions uh, before or after the talk, feel free to ping me there. I'm a designer, and I would say that last year was one of the more fulfilling years uh, of my career. Uh, I'm quite active in our local WordPress community in Croatia. I've, I'm from Zagreb. And there I help organize meetups and uh, WordCamp Zagreb. That's the biggest, I would say, and most elaborate WordCamp to date in Croatia. We had almost 400 people. But to tell you the truth, I'm a designer at heart. And while helping organizing meetups or WordCamps, and I think that's great, I love to improve things through actually designing stuff, not only organizing the catering or, or speakers. And that's why conferences, for me, are a great way to actually expand my horizons as a designer and as a speaker. And over the years, I traveled to a whole bunch of conference, conferences, and I've also got a chance to speak at some of them. From Wind Days, a big creation conference, um, WebCamp, a local community conference, Drupal Heart Camps, and a whole bunch of WordCamps. And one thing that always resonated with me was the experience on these conferences. Like from the talks to networking, speaking in the lunch break or coffee breaks, or fika breaks in your case, uh, and the, all the attention to the little details of the conference, uh, like this beautiful shaped heart here or, or some other design thing. And we could say that some of these conferences that we all go to are commercial ones, where the ticket can cost like 500 euros or so. But there are a lot of community ones, like this one, where the ticket is 20, 30, 40 euros. And if we would try to see what's the difference between the two, we could say that the commercial ones are trying to earn a little money by doing conferences, maybe paying speakers or, or try to maybe, I don't know, present some companies or things like that, which is perfectly fine, of course. Uh, while the community ones, they're counting on a whole lot of volunteers to actually step up and do what they can to help either, as, either organize a conference, maybe volunteer like uh, for the attendee registration, or, you know, organize catering, or apply to speak, or whatever. And there are a lot of designers at these conferences who actually make uh, all the design stuff that we want to maybe take home as a part of swag or some picture or, or whatever. And that's what I really like about these conferences, because you see that the team, the organization team and the designers, they always try like to go in extraordinary ways to do something that is like unique for each year, for each WordCamp, which is interesting, uh, uh, seeing that I'm a designer myself. And why are all these designers, we could ask ourselves, why are they doing this for free? Uh, why am I doing that for free? So why is that? And I'd like to share my story, my experience. Uh, after speaking at WordCamp Europe 2016 in, in Vienna, Austria, I wanted to help out. Uh, and I was speaking about um, style guides, modular design, and things like that. And after, the, after I'd, I've done the talk, I was quite happy it was over because I was really stressed. And I finally got some time to actually enjoy the conference, you know, because before the talk, you're all, always stressed, and after that, you can, like, enjoy, relax, talk to people. And I really loved what, what the whole organizing team did to make one great WordCamp and actually feel everyone uh, included uh, feel good. And I thought to myself, okay, there I was talking about this modular thing, design thing, how we can actually improve our processes and workflows. And I thought, well, why, why wouldn't I volunteer my knowledge, my, my time, to actually help out in the next year? And that's what I did. I talked with Scott Evans, one of the uh, designers for 2016, and I was determined to help. So as soon as the, the next call for organizers uh, for Working Europe 2017 uh, was online, I applied because I wanted to test my uh, put my skills to the challenge. And several weeks after that, um, nine months before the conference, I was uh, selected to be one of the designers in a team of 44 organizers, which is quite a big team, but 
don't uh, keep in mind that this is a conference for 2,000 people or more. And our team, we had six designers. Uh, our team lead was Sonia Lakes. And we were responsible for everything design related, like the badges, uh, like the small things, even like the food labels, to overall branding, website, everything. And I was really fortunate to, to help on some of these tasks. And I learned a lot from it, perhaps even more than uh, expected. And having a team of six people, six designers in our case, uh, working remotely across the globe, across various time zones, uh, in their spare time, volunteering their time, uh, I thought to myself, well, that probably sounds crazy. And it is. But why are they doing that? Why, why did I do that? Uh, how many of you have been to at least one work in Europe? Could you raise your hands? OK. Uh, about a third of the, of the audience. So Working in Europe is a yearly regional conference. Uh, it's basically a big word camp that actually tries to combine all the communities in, in Europe and abroad. And every year, uh, the team, design team tries to take on a different visual style, different aesthetics. And for 2017 in Paris, we decided to pursue an Art Deco uh, kind of design style. And one of the big goals for that year was to, to actually work on the new logo as well, one that would actually uh, maybe uh, refresh the whole thing a little bit more, and work on other things like the new uh, WordCamp team. And this was no easy task, because how do you make one big conference that, that is changing location each year, how do you make that unique, while still keeping that familiar face that everyone uh, is accustomed to it? And we were, of course, working on, on updating the, the, the site itself, which is no easy task on its own. And being a designer or a developer, building a website sounds easy, right? Um, you just open your like, favorite editor, or Sublime, or whatever. Maybe you just download the latest uh, framework you're using, like Foundation, or, or Bootstrap, or something like that. And that's it. You can start. Uh, well, it wasn't so easy, especially if you're working on a WordCamp website. So WordPress being an open source project and WordCamp's community conferences, there are certain rules and limitations that you should be aware of when you're working and helping organize a WordCamp. So when a WordCamp is uh, created, uh, scheduled, the WordPress Foundation creates a specific WordPress installation on, on the multi-site uh, that, that is basically a I would say, a modified WordPress installation with some of the custom plugins for the WordCamp website. And you can log in as an organizer. You can change the team, pick one of the pre-selected teams, like 2017, 16, whatever. Uh, or you can start on with one of the blank teams uh, that have no styles. And while you can add your own styles, make modifications in CSS, or, or, or change the styles completely, you can't change the HTML behind the team or the PHP, because other WordCamps might rely on that team specifically for their, for their website. And if you change something, if you make a breaking change, then you would break a whole bunch of WordCamps, which is not cool. So one of the first things that I learned coming from my freelancer perspective was that it's up to you to make your process work with what you have available and not the other way around. That was my first lesson. I knew I had to work under constraints, and I had to modify my process to work within those constraints. So Bernard from our team, uh, he was working uh, on porting the latest underscores uh, team uh, to be used as a WordCamp starter team. And the whole process was discussed publicly and transparently on make.wordpress.org, and the community was involved in the decision-making process. But now that the underlying work, we had a good foundation uh, for the team was done, we could put our skills to styling the websites. And given that I've, I've talked a lot, a lot about building style guides and things like that, I decided to put those, those skills I have to the test. And we had one of our main objectives for 2017 was to build to, to utilize all the powers of modern technology, like the, the GAL build process or, 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 uh, or SAS, CSS compilers, or, or things like that, 
to actually build something that can be customizable for other WordCamps or, or maybe served as an inspiration for them. And by using this modular approach to, to designing a WordCamp uh, website, we could host our entire style guide locally, and you can also find it on GitHub as well. You can check it out. And this is what gets, this is the CSS that you find here is the one that gets applied to the WordCamp Europe uh, website. But meanwhile, among other things, there was still the branding challenge that, that we were hard uh, uh, and worked with. So the initial WordPress logo, uh, WordCamp logo was designed by Tammy Lister, and it served its purpose for a few years. But as the conference grew each year, the logo was updated to reflect that. And one of the things that I really liked about the 2015 logo was that the location for the for the Seville uh, uh, city was marked in a red dot. But the problem was in 2016, and how we later found out in 17, uh, in Vienna and Paris, that red logo would be basically underneath the WordPress logo, which is not ideal. So you have this branding, this, this idea, but it doesn't work for all cases. So the team in 2016 tried to actually go around it, tried to maybe create some sort of uh, unique logo generator that would enable everyone uh, who organized the next year to actually, you know, make it, make it consistent, make it unique. And this is one of the generators that Scott Evans, uh, one of the design team, worked on. But due to time constraints, and since the team was a lot smaller back then, they didn't have enough time to actually finish it, to, to, to uh, review it, and to make it final. So in 2017, we decided to take this on ourselves. And my design approach was to basically identify all the issues that the, cur the current logo has, all the challenges, all the quirks that we had to think around of it, and make it sure that that logo that, that we work on is actually unique for, WordCamp uh, for, for each WordCamp Europe edition. I wanted to make sure that it works in black and white and it's recognizable, and in a sense that it tells you this is a European event. It was really important for me that it could be recreated with SVG or like other free uh, uh, programs for, for vector uh, modification, and that it tells you that this is, after all, a WordPress community event. So everyone from the team, started to work on, on their concepts. And there were six of us in the team. And after each week, we would discuss these concepts and we would take notes from them. And one of the drafts that I did, one of the concepts I did was this one. This was a rough draft, but it was one that resonated a lot of, uh, I would say, good feedback from all the organizers, so from over 40 organizers in our team. Uh, and we got a lot of valuable feedback from them, uh, mostly non-design feedback, like, is this like clear enough to the people, or, or should we make changes? So this was a rough concept, but it communicated my idea. Presenting your design, your idea, is probably the most important skill that you can master as a designer. Successful designers are communicators, and they don't run away from, from the challenge. And while we could, uh, we could argue that good design needs explanation, and I would wholeheartedly agree on that, our design process as designers, especially ones who are working with open source technologies, have to rely on all the set of tools and processes that they have in order to actually help push that idea forward, make it more understandable for everyone. And people are passionate, and they say that design, designers have big egos. When they see something they like or dislike, they say it. And the thing that I learned, which is not all that obvious, is that the way you say things is as important as what you say. And that was my second lesson. Because you're discussing ideas with other people who are also volunteering their time and skill to do something for the community, something that we will all benefit from. And most of the time, being that we are a remote team and basically all open source projects are organized in that way, people are chatting in Slack, communicating with text usually, or emojis, or, or, 
or CAD GIFs. And not everyone is a native English speaker, has the same vocabulary, can summarize their ideas in a few sentences. And while someone can like communicate without problems, some people need a voice call or a video call, or maybe someone is more like uh, feels better if, he, if uh, they can communicate in person or a cup of coffee or, or a cake or, or something like that to get the message across. So it's important that you understand that when you are working with open source projects, especially if you're working in the design aspect of it, that you have to spend as much as time communicating as you spend designing because you are not working alone. This is not something that you are doing and then presenting to everyone else. This is a joint process of other people contributing to the same idea. So in the next few weeks, we worked together as a team uh, with inputs and ideas, and we iterated the logo uh, and tried to find a sweet spot for communicating our initial idea. And we tried to locate the balance between a realistic representation of Europe and a more symbolic one. And as the log iterations went on, guided by all the constructive comments and my strong passion to present idea, uh, I worked on a simple logo generator that will actually help others in our team understand just what are the possibilities of doing something like this, how we can maybe utilize all the technologies that we have at our disposal to make something that can be played around with, customized, make unique for each WordCamp. And with each week passing by, we tweak the quirks of the logo and gather feedback within the team. And after some time, we managed to set uh, a specific set of brand guidelines and to see what works and what doesn't work and to try to find a unified approach for all the upcoming years. And these weekly iterations uh, allowed us to experiment with different ideas, uh, especially for making the location uh, unique for each year, how to make it work in black and white and small sizes, or how to make it unique, what can be maybe uh, improved from, from the red dot idea that we had first. And we were aware that these certain simplifications that we made to the logo would actually have a downside. Having this iterative process of working uh, and the idea and creating a logo generator like this one actually helped us to agree on that decision that we, we are pursuing uh, a right course of action. And several weeks after that, the logo was introduced to the public on the website and all the materials, even the swag like socks or, or, or T-shirts. And I remember Sonia, our team lead, asking me if, if I was proud and happy seeing like the logo I worked on, on the big stage. And I was. I was very proud. Uh, I had that fuzzy feeling inside of me telling me, yes, your work is appreciated, perfect. After all, I'm a designer and I have an ego. Uh, but to tell you the truth, the, 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 the thing that I was most proud of was that this was a team decision. This was a team effort. And the whole team actually inspired me to do my best work and by implementing their ideas and their suggestions to make something that will actually work. Because my idea of a logo generator was built on top of Scott's idea. And this was a remix, uh, an idea uh, infused with my thoughts and ideas, but also with other people's comments. And the team got plenty of positive comments uh, about the branding. Um, and the overall work we did. And although we got, we got some negative comments as well, which is something that you can probably uh, expect when you're working uh, in, the, in, in the domain of, of open source, we were really certain that we made the right decision because we were aware that that process that we did, that iterative process, was our best work under the given circumstances. So we were really assured that what we did was based on, on a certain set of guidelines. And you might have heard that designers like to use the word final in their design files naming conventions. And 
that's always a hard thing because you're working on something that the community would have to call their own, but you can never make sure that sometimes the community might have a better idea or, or they see something that you've missed or something that can be worked on. And that's okay. That's okay. We got some of these comments, like, well, which we consider really positive comments, and we made those uh, ideas and integrated them into the new logo. I think that designers are often waiting for that one perfect project where they will show off all their skills and make it like a career project. And most of the time, it doesn't work like that. A lot of skills that I have acquired over the years were improved thanks to the open source community. So, for example, several months back, uh, I made my first successful design sprint uh, and did a series of user interviews and validating a prototype I was working for a client. But to be honest, I had some help from the open source community. Because several months before that, at WordCamp London Contributor Day, <coughs> I met uh, Johan and Martin, uh, and together with Tammy, we actually worked on some of the questions for, for the usability interviews for the Gutenberg editor at the time. And this was a really great place for me to learn and to improve my skill set. And we did several user interviews at, at the Contributor Day. We took some notes, discussed the results, and not long after that, uh, Anna Harrison from Australia took, took our testing script and did a whole bunch of user tests on her local meetup in Brisbane, Australia. And she improved the script, gave plenty of thoughts and ideas and comments, which actually helped the open source community, but it also helped me to learn from her experience. And for me, that is the true power of community and open source. And sometimes being involved in the in the open source community might come at a cost. You don't always have the time to contribute as much as you'd like, or you're not in the mood. And I've certainly felt exhausted at times. But I still keep coming back, because seeing how the connections I make throughout the community and the things I learn, how they en enrich my life. So next time when you miss a meetup or a conference, or use some open source software you are passionate about, think about contributing back and make that first step. Because you can contribute to, uh, to open source in a whole bunch of ways. Uh, perhaps you can dedicate 5% of your company time, like, like Jimmy said before, which was a great example. Or you don't ha necessarily have to help by writing code or fixing patches or things like that. You can do usability testing for, for Gutenberg, which is quite active today. Or you know, maybe you can help with the documentation or, or help organize a meetup or a WordCamp, help under branding or website. There are all kinds of ways for you to help out in the open source community and you can find your own way. So if you had asked me a few years ago how to become a part of the design team for, we could say at the time, the biggest conference uh, uh, to WordPress in the world, I'm not sure what I would have said. But today I have a rough idea though. Find the project and the community you're passionate about. Learn what people there are working on. Join their meetings on Slack, uh, mailing list, blogs. Don't forget to introduce yourself. Ask how you can help. I doubt people will ever refuse your help. That's what I did at WordCamp Europe 2016. Do the work you can and feel good afterwards. So to summarize it, start small help people around you, give back to the community, and remember to have fun in the process. Thank you. <clears throat> so we have time for a few questions before the Fika break. Um, everyone's waiting for their coffee. Well, I'm going to hold you up. I have a question. Um, you said that there were uh, six persons in the design team. Uh, how many were there in total? Do you know that for WordCamp Europe? Sorry, how many? Uh, in total for all the teams or how so many organizers? For, uh, yeah, the, the 2017 team, uh, so for WordCamp Europe in Paris, had around 44 organizers. Uh, so we are talking about people who are volunteering their time to help with the sponsors, with the communication, with content uh, picking talks, things like that. And this year is even bigger. It has 56 or 54, I'm not sure, 100%. Uh, 
And yeah, that's, that's a lot of manpower, I would say. And that's a lot of people. But when you're organizing an event of this size, and you want to make sure that everyone feels like inclusive and everything works fine, then I guess you just have to put the work in it. Yeah. Um, I have another question. And since it's a big conference, it's really international, not only for Europe, but in terms of basically the whole world. Uh, design is usually cultural. I mean, I'm, since you're working from different countries, did you find any difficulties working with people having different cultural backgrounds and like challenges in design-wise uh, because of that? So, yeah, the team is scattered across the world. So uh, we try to have uh, people in the design team from the country that, that the, where, where the conference will be held. So we have, last year we had one, one person from Paris, uh, from France, and this year we have also one from Serbia. But everyone can join. So everyone can uh, apply when the call for organizers is open. And the, the, diver the, the more diverse people that we have, the better the work we will produce. Because the idea of a work in Europe is not only, so for example, the next work in Europe is in Serbia, in Belgrade. And the idea of that work camp is not only to promote one city or one country. This is an event for everyone. And that's the idea with our logo generator. We wanted to make something that would actually enable the community to maybe remix it, use it, maybe do some ideas of their own, some proposals. So, yeah, I would say that the, the culture of everyone actually, we try to accommodate that and make people feel involved. It's not only one person's decision. Yeah, I think it's a great work that you've done. And I think we should give a big round of applause